I would like to thank you first of all, Father Benedict and the CMRI, all the priests of the CMRI, the religious sisters, who allow me today to speak, who allow me also to join and be related as, in the same way as Father Riesling talked today. I've been attached to the CMRI from 2000. 17, six, uh, 16, 2016, and I came for the first time to the conference in 2017, which was a good year because of the anniversary of the apparitions in Fatima and the miracle of the sun, uh, 100 years la uh, later. Today, I want to say bonjour, as we say in French. Ah, thank you, there's a reaction. <laughs> Let's see that you, I can see that you are not indifferent already. That's good. <laughs> Bonjour to à tous. Bonjour à tous. As we say in French, that means hello to all in different languages. Good day to all. Buenos dias. How usted? Good, guten tag. Father Riesling is not here to confirm. <laughs> Buongiorno in Italian. Boa tag, because I know there are some Portuguese lady, and we are speaking about Fatima. And I go to Portugal since last year. I met one Portuguese person who asked me to come. I'm doing mission in different countries today. I visit six countries at least, according, uh, in which also there is France. Last year I performed 100,000 kilometers in France, 12,000 in Ireland uh, driving. That's missions. This afternoon I will share the history of France, which led to the indifferentism uh, in the eldest daughter of the church and in our world today. Indifferentism is uh, to the message of God, especially to the message of God and Mary, which uh, we are focused today on spiritual indifference. First of all, the definition of the term. It is important when you start to speak in conversation, not only in conference, but also in conversation that you have, when you start to try to uh, convince people on the faith and morals to define the terms. Otherwise, you are going to go into qui pro quo and mess up with the people. So definition of the term, definition of the indifferent indifferentism, what is it in the Roman Catholic Church it is the belief held by someone that no one religion or philosophy is superior to another. We will keep on that scope today. The Catholic Church ascribes the indifferentism to many philosophies, covered by Father Francesco Redecchi in the book, which is, I recommend, which is on sale here, this book, Wonders of the Catholic Doctrine. Many philosophies, first atheistic, second materialistic, third pantheistic, fourth agnostic. First atheistic the denial is the denial of existence of God. Second materialistic is the matter, uh, the, the philosophy that means matter is God, any material thing is God. So there is too much attachment to the creature. And you know what I'm talking about because that leads to Americanism and you're concerned about here, I'm sorry. Uh, in this world. Third, there is pantheistic. Uh, God is in the world, or it is the philosophy speaking about the world is in God. There are two uh, special specialist philosophers uh, of modern eras here, Eagle, Spinoza, Baruch Spinoza. And fourth, agnostic, is to deny the ability of knowing by reason, which is Dif uh, opposed against St. Thomas' teaching, which explains again in the Catholic, uh, the wonders of the Catholic faith by Father Francesco Redecchi. It must be finished over there in the bookstore, it's on sale. Uh, you must buy it, it's very good, <laughs> if you don't understand. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Father did a good job there to explain the five proofs of the existence of God. There are three kinds of indifferentism. I will go very quickly on that because there is a lot of things to say today. The absolute indifferentism, and that's Immanuel Kant. I thank Father uh, Benedict Hughes who spoke about modernism. Modernism has been, uh, Kant, Immanuel Kant has been the, doc the special doctor of, and uh, master of modernism 
is uh, explain his theory is explained in the encyclical Pascendi Dominici Regis. We have to combat that today. Then there is uh, restricted um, indifferentism, which is the father is of it is Rousseau. We'll speak about him to later on. And then there is the liberal or latitudinarian indifferentism. Uh, I don't have a father for that, but it makes no difference which of the several Christian denominations we have and we choose to join. And that this one is very, very important today. So indifference means there is no difference, there is no care, there is no mind, there is no difference in between anything, there is no love, and therefore it is a person of cold art who is an indifferent person. And those also the indifferentisms, thanks to the modernisms, is going to deny, if people are going to deny in this kind of movement, the existence of the principles of reasons like especially the principles of contradiction, especially the uh, principles of identity. Something cannot be and be together on the same ratio at the same time. That's the principle of contradictions, eagles, that's eagle denying it. That's also the philosophy of good for you today. And thanks for that, uh, Father Casimir Proscorius, who two years ago explained in a conference here uh, his topic was objectivity against subjectivity. Our Vatican II destroyed the morality. For that, it's on record. You can buy those uh, conferences on record at the bookstores, I imagine, still today, I hope. Therefore, let us not forget that two loves made two cities, the love of self, despise the love of God, made the city of Satan. The love of God despised the love of self, made the city of God. And that's St. Augustine, the City of God book, quoting, uh, I'm quoting today. Lucifer is the one first, mod, uh, who became the one first model and actor of indifferentism toward God. Let us not forget his words, non serviam, I shall not serve God, I shall not observe the law of God who is going to decide to take a human body. We have the first sin in the universe by Lucifer. We have the second sin in the universe by Adam and Eve, that is the original sin. We have the first sin in the universe by the standard man or woman sinning. Don't forget, people. And that sin, according to catechism, is disobedience to God, and also, which we should say today, indifference to God and his law. Now let us talk first of the origin, the origins. Uh, uh, let us then to look at the uh, historical facts in France, in the kingdom of France started with the conversion of Clovis, Clotilde's husband. But before, there is that book. It's in French, unfortunately, for you, but it's a good book I'm using today. Mary, Re Queen of France. Renium Gallier, Renium Marie, that's Latin, you can understand, maybe for some. The Kingdom of Gaul, of France in Latin, the kingdom of, is the Kingdom of Mary. And that's Father Fusier, the author. He was a canon of honor and knight of Our Lady at Lo of Loreto. And he has written a book called Marie Reine de France. This is the one I show you right away, Mary Queen of France. In this book, Father Fusier is saying that before the birth of our Savior, Celtics, Druids, were giving a cult to the Virgin about to give birth mean, uh, by the name of Virgini Pariture, the virgins to be born, to give birth. In chart, city in France, we found traces of that worship to, be, to the Blessed Virgin Mother before the introduction of Christianism into Gaul's country. It has been defined, Mary is the Queen of France by right first of inheritance, second by right of conquest, third by right of election. Queen of France by right of inheritance first, 
It is at the feet of Notre Dame of Bethlehem in Ferrier, which is a little village in Gatineau, where I live today, area where Clovis chose the one, namely Mary, in order, she, she, in order he became the first king of France, through the god of Clotilde and her prayers. It is also at the feet of Our Lady that Clotilde obtained the conversion of Clovis. Thus the sun rose on Tolbiac and is going to illuminate this nation which will become the eldest daughter of the Catholic Church. What a responsibility you should say today, even. Mary, secondly, is queen of France by right of conquest. Christ gave a special mission to this young nation by giving faith and sword through Clovis, through John of Arc, through the great king and saint Louis IX. Thanks to the French monks, Saint Dominic, Saint Martin, the faith has been spread through the world, in France especially. We got spread of monumental cathedrals, basilica, of Gothic styles, of Roman styles. Still today, even recently attacked though. You know what I mean. And third, Mary is queen of France by right of election. Let us render homage to kings of France who were really Christian kings to offer the crown to the queen of heavens. Louis XIII was especially the monarch of France, the most devout to Mary because she gave him her son. The sporous Catholic Assumption Feast is the true national feast we celebrate each year since the vow of Louis XIII came up. It is not, of course, the 14th of July. Our Lady of Assumption has been named since first patron of, of France. It is why we add, and that's the second part, Christendom in France in the Middle, the middle Ages period is the most gold, gold period of Christendom. The 13th century was the height of Christendom throughout the whole of Europe. Society as a whole was Catholic. Kings, queens, people in high places to the peasants. Saint Louis King of France was the role model of Catholics to summarize the minds, the arts and lives, uh, lives of Catholics at the time. It can be through the words of the mother of Saint Louis, quote, I would prefer you dead than for you to ever commit a mortal sin, end quote. And it was Urban II, the Pope, saying that Renum Gallie, Renum Marie, in the 11th century, the kingdom of France is the kingdom of Mary. But also of Christ and Saint Joseph, appearing in Parelemonial, the sacred art devotion came up there, and in Cotignac, uh, where St. Joseph appeared to a Protestant and converted him, which is a, one of the rarest apparitions of St. Joseph in the world. So, therefore, on the French soil, six, it is said, 600,000 religious buildings are known, oratories, chapels, churches, basilicas, cathedrals, and that at least one statue of the most Holy Virgin Mary. Almost always there was an ex voto to thank Our Lady for a miracle done by her in, a, in the churches. France and the French were living under the protection of Mary under that time. We were counting more than 1,255 pil places of pilgrimage till today. That is why we can say that the Middle Age is the golden time of Christendom in France but also in Europe and then in the world. Missions in America, North and South, Christeros in Mexico, France, Ireland, Scotland, England, Belgium, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Poland, Romania, Czech Republic, Russia, Hungary, Italy, Spain, Portugal became great lovers and devout nations to Mary. And thanks to the monk, like St. Patrick in Ireland, St. Columban also, St. Bruno, St. Benedict and others. And later came, unfortunately, the devil work acted again. Later came errors in France, number three. 
from the 14th to the 18th century in France. It entered into a series of Catholic plagues of spiritual and religious indifference. First with the Renaissance period, society became centered toward man instead of God through philosophical errors of men such as Erasmus, who was the leader of the humanis humanism movement which started at that time. And it, star it started to spread into arts, music, architecture. After came the reform. This was the destruction of the Holy Mass and Graces by Martin Luther, which led to the war of religions in the whole of Europe. For example, it led to the idea of Nantes, signed by Henry IV in France, which permits Protestant worship. And we have then reactions with the slaughters of the Saint Barthélemy. Then reform will became a good route for both Enlightenment and French Revolution in 1789. In first the Enlightenment movement of the 18th century, Rousseau, Voltaire, Montesquieu, Diderot, Descartes are the main philosophers of that movement which took, uh, especially with Voltaire, who came in England to get those ideas. These philosophers infected society through their writings of false beliefs. For that, we have the nice catechism here. That's, um, I brought 10 copies of it. It will be on sale at the book bookstores for anybody who is interested in it. It's quoting the false doctrine also about the validity of the sacrament today in the Novus Ordo Church. A very good book, translating from the oratory catechism, the oratory uh, German priest by uh, Father Schoenbrut, who, is the, who died a few years ago now, and Father Bird, who is still alive. Father Bird is an American priest, he's in Germany, and Father Schoenbrut, uh, whom I started my ministry with for five months uh, in Belgium, was also a German uh, native. He, uh, unfortunately, he died in a car accident. He was not dri the driver. And we must pray for him, for him today. For example, Rousseau was saying that all men are born good and that the society corrupts them, which contradicts the Catholic dogma of original sin. This infiltration of these dangerous ideas were the embers of spiritual and religious indifferentism in France, which spread its errors to the whole world. The Enlightenment movement provoked then the French Revolution, as you must maybe know. 1789 until today, is still on, their motto was liberty, uh, in French I should say, liberté, égalité, fraternité. This is the trademark of the French Revolution. It means liberty, equality, and fraternity. And it did not stop there. They added the words, or you die. These terms seem harmless in their singular simple meaning. However, to the revolutionaries, this was their political religion to destroy the Catholic faith in France, and they followed through many good Catholics who refused to submit to the revolutionary liberalism and they were killed. Priests refractaires, don't forget those. Also in France, the clergy was caught by the signing of the civil constitution of the clergy. You can imagine it's the beginning here of a reaction through the prêtres, prêtres refractaires in French. Fortunately, they reacted. They were, that means the priest refractory. This means that because these priests who refuse to sign the document and prefer not to swear on it, because that's what was asked to them, to the priests, to all priests of the clergy at that time, by the revolutionaries and by the states, by the state, to accept also the revolution uh, principles, were persecuted and killed. And you have for that uh, the excellent ca case of St. Vincent Ferrer, uh, who is uh, this year, or last year, I think, uh, there is a special, uh, in Van, in Brittany, there is a special exhibition at the moment in the church on his relics, and they are exposed. 
In Vendée, France alone, between, and it was between 117,000 and 450,000 people killed because of that uh, revolution time, uh, kind of a civil war here on both sides, over a population of 800,000 people. The reaction had come from Brittany, Vendée, and also Alsace-Lorraine, England, and Ireland, who helped to fight the revolutionary armies. The French Revolution catapulted France into an abyss of spiritual and religious indifferentism from the government to the churches. So to choose one of the three revolution of words of their motto, equality here is how the revolution tactic of equality worked then in, and still today on the people. Through that uh, tactic, we have liberalism, we have indifferentism. First, the people are convinced that they are not equal so that they fight for equality. So to not be equal, it is not just a right in their minds, and it is the cause of anarchy. Second, it creates hatred and jealousy between the differences uh, that naturally exist, young, old, rich, poor, male, female. You have today the so-called political incorrect. Third, then you have a revolt, and this revolt leads to an equality that is imposed. This, this equality is artificial, of course, and hatred still persists. And it works with the universal suffrage, where all the laws against nature are voted by men who have been democratically elected. Then in France, we have that uh, person, Philippe de Villiers, who is a politician. He was a, he's a form, he was a former politician, now he retired. And he wrote books of St. Louis, uh, John of Arc, and others. But uh, he has uh, set up a nice place, which is Puy du Fou, where is a very nice spectacle and scenery given today. It is a very nice park of attraction with all the history of France put into place. Uh, theater plays, I would say, video plays also, and activities we, and, uh, like a village functioning together with uh, people who are volunteers to be actors and uh, living in that place to show up all different periods of the French history. It's very interesting. I've been there many times and it's uh, good for the art, good for the mind also, the good work he did. There are future opening park in Russia, in Spain, in China, in the future, in, for, from him. He has a project for that. Now we must speak for indifferentism in our times. It is now a big scoop to say. It's a big question today to speak about. And I noticed that through my traveling in different countries. Where do we see it? We must look first in our own homes with the raising of our children. For that, the uh, first lecture was good to follow. Good uh, advice by Father Redeki today. How also we influence them for the good with Catholic example and damage them with bad example. On that, there is Don Bosco who wrote a good book. Uh, good advices for the children, positive and negative points. How to behave. Do we include in modern TV, do we, sorry, indulge in modern TV, freedom to access social media unattended? Examples of Catholic modesty, good company, idleness, and the most important, prayer. Prayer life, spiritual life. That also Father Radecki spoke about today, for perseverance. According to St. Alphonsus and the Church, prayer is the key to salvation, also St. Francis de Sales reminds it. So he is there a solid prayer life that is practiced daily in the home, which leads to a good spiritual life. This is just the beginning, but it is the most important. And that Bishop Pivarunas two years ago, so in a 2017, talked about it at the conference of October 2017, yes, how to persever operate perseverance in faith and morals in the households, 
especially today. No hello, no more thank you, no more goodbye in the society today. The people are just walking like that. Walking like that. No answer when you say hello to them, especially when it is a priest talking. What about society ills and conversation? There is nothing Catholic left in this world when we go out and look around us and the people we meet. Our world is saturated with indifferentism to God and Mary in every area of life, from life to death, abortion to euthanasia. In Ireland, big mind, earthquake. In a year, they voted what France decided in assemblies, through assemblies in 50 years, through chambers. A lot of brainstorming, of course, came up. What about everything in between? Corrupt education. You must be so grateful to have here blessings of the Catholic education you have the opportunity to receive by the CMRI education institutions. Second, corrupt thinking. In fact, people with no true Catholic education and who are products of the modern education systems, the modern education systems are not taught how to think in Catholic terms. Everything is turned around. What is bad is good. What is good is bad. Where can we go with that in conversation? Where does one start when that it is uh, that is impossible to reason? Again, the value of Catholic education here at the CMRI, I hope, are great gifts from God, which allow our children to have the true best start in life, to know how to think reason and therefore not only practice their faith privately but also be able to help God and Mary with their message of conversations and salvations of souls and be fighter, good fighter of God and Mary. With the solidarity it's helped here. Also the society ill which destroys the institution of marriage in our society. Third there is speech we don't care, we don't mind, good for you, whatever, are all of everyday language used by people today with indifference to immorality. How do we answer, my dear Catholic friend? How do we communicate with these responses to moral issues? We must demonstrate Catholic teachings and principles that evoke a sense of Catholic morality to combat indifferentism to help people understand that there are people living in this world, as few as we may be, that will prick their conscience to think differently, to think as Catholics. Living as true Catholics today means we must face society and its indifferentism to God and Mary and the teachings of the Catholic Church continuing to, on the topic of speech we hear every day and see it written. Oh my gosh, this is a progression of the term, oh my God. Once upon a time, people knew not to say, oh my God, so they use, oh my gosh, as a way of, to disguise the blasphemy. Now, because of widespread indifferentism to God, the words, oh my God, are said without shame, without hesitation, and without any thought of the offense to God. Worse is when people say Jesus or G in anger, the word Jesus, and other terms other than Jesus were used to hide the blasphemy. And I'm putting a parenthesis here, even Hollywoods, which I should call Jollywood, are allowed to use those terms in the movies. No problem. Now it is so commonplace to boldly and unashamedly say Jesus for almost any common expression that, is, that it is seen, heard, and used as a matter of everyday speech. The way to combat and turn the blasphemy into a blessing when Jesus expressed in ways other than in holy terms, we can whisper or utter the words, blessed be the name of Jesus to bring good out of evil through the grace of God. 
Let us look at marriage. It is not regarded as necessary to be married in order to have children. Once upon a time, an expectant unmarried girl was hidden from the world to protect her reputation from being destroyed because of the sin attached. Now it is not even considered to be a sin at all and is widely promoted through the schools providing the means to prevent expectancies and not the sin itself. The baby does not matter. It is all about me and whatever is best for me. That is the world's thinking and indifferentism to, God law, to God's laws on marriage and childbearing. Novisoro has even changed, twisted the ends of matrimony, of marriage. Fifth, modesty, fashion which includes hairstyles, are gender neutralized, so that it is almost impossible at times to identify by sight alone whether one is a female or a male. This brings us back to the eras of, in France of the French Revolution and equality. Six, it is schools and university. What if there were unisex restroom lavatory, then it is the answer, good for you. How do we teach our children and ourselves to live in the world, but not of the world? Saint Jean de Bosco, as I said a few minutes ago, has given good principles of education according four temperaments and positive negative attitude to do. So, indifferentism leads to worship of idols in sports, in religion, in sports competition, matches, are put on Sunday on purpose, so people don't go, don't go to church anymore. In religion, the Sunday ceremony of Sunday's Novusordite is on Saturday night, evening, so people can be free on Sunday. This indifferentism with John Paul II led to Assisi's movement. Ratzinger sang the Shalom prayers, sang for peace. Indifferentism will lead to one world religion called one, I'm sure, laicism. It is the religion of laity. Soon it will be obligatory to not wear anymore the cassock our cassocks outside, in public. Priests in Mexico, priests are go getting out, uh, going out in civil at attirement. In here, you know also, there is the suit, civil cloth to be worn outside when we leave our places, our churches. In France even, from 2014, I know by experience here. We are not allowed anymore to go in cassock in schools and university and any place where there is some training period. So Mexico, USA, France. Bergoglio has recently criticized, though he wears one, in, so to speak, one, white, he criticized young tradi priest clothing. Cassocks, he said, quote, suggests moral problems. But he wears a cassock still. Five, number five, the message of God and Mary. I think we must be speak about, there's a lot to say on that. Dear Christian faithful, we must wake up today the warning, the bip bip must come out with liberalism, with indifferentism. The old world has been lobotomized. That is, the people are sleeping. If I hope you are not. That is why we came at Fatima Conference today. And now we must start to fight again with the message of God, with the message of Mary. First through the message of God through oral, through writings. Oral that is tradition, writing that is using uh, men like Moses, da David, Daniel, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and others. The Gospels people, the four Gospel writers, two are apostles, two are disciples of apostles. Matthew, Luke, Mark, and John. 
Matthew is good for the daily life. Luke is a doctor, was a doctor. Mark is uh, giving some anachronism, but it's interesting. He's completing the others. He was a disciple of apostle. And John, the one most beloved apostle of Christ, is more good for dogmas and spiritual life. Especially through Christ also, during his three years of preaching as the incarnate word of God. Quote, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That's Luke chapter 9, verses 23. So today's gospel again says to be secutish, that's St. Francis Borgia's feast day gospel. We must be secuti, that means in Latin, followers of Christ. God has asked to bear our crosses, to follow his commands, to follow his son in words and deeds. At baptism of Christ, at transfiguration feast, these are the words which were used in the gospel. Quote, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. St. Paul understood God's call. We had that with Father Riesling, nice uh, lecture today, important of the call as a, to be a priest. St. Paul understand, understood that God's call after he fell down from his horse. He became from Saul, he became Paul. Saul means in Hebrew, the greatest. Paul means the little. And the saints understand, understand well in their life that they must become little in order to become great. With one faith, with one baptism, with one God, in one God we believe, one on, in one only apostolic and Catholic Rome and Roman church we believe. A few Sundays ago it was reminded that we have to choose, dear Christian faithful, between God and Mammon, the God of um, money. As also Christ answers about a coined question on the, of the Jews. Give, render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. For also the two loves have made two cities, as St. Augustine say. Therefore we must be imitators of Christ. And please read the imitation of Christ daily. It's a daily good book. Read the gospel. They are full of lessons. St. Alphonsus wrote a book on the Passion of Christ, Consideration on the Passion of Christ. That's in French, but here also I uh, think it's a passion, uh, consideration on pas uh, meditation on passion and death of Christ in English, the title. Very often, let us contemplate the seven words of Christ as he wrote. Among them, there are the words to Mary and to John, which is the theme of to this year conference. Because from the cross, Christ gave to Mary more children, us, as adoptive ones. And to John, to be the first adoptive child of Mary, and through him, all the mankind. John, let us not forget, was the most loved by Christ. On the cross, quote, and I, if I be lifted up from earth, will draw all things to myself. Let us sing, O crux ave, spes unica, hello to the cross, our only hope. We are going to be wing, uh, conquering through Christ, through the cross, as the victory of Christ, through the cross on Mount Calvary, through his passion, also uh, three days later, rising up again from the dead. Seven words of Christ on the cross are very important. From St. Alphonse's book, Consideration of the Passion. First, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they do. That's Luke 23, verses 34. Second, Amen, Amen, I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. These are the words to the good thief who repent and did a very nice act of contrition. 
he has stolen all his life, even paradise. Luke, that's Luke 23, verses 43. His name was Dismas, not Dismiss. Free woman, here is your son. Here is your mother to Mary and to John. That's John 19, chapter 26, uh, chapter 19, verses 26, 27. Fourth, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27, 46. Fifth, I thirst, John 19, 28. Sixth, it is consummated, John 19, 30. And seven, Father, I put my soul into thy hands. I commend my soul into my hands. These are the prayer, nice prayer in Compline in the office. In manus tuas commendo spiritum meum. Jesus Christ has given the message God wanted to give us to follow with fidelity, with simplicity, and with love, and also with humility. Humility is this virtue with two Latin words, humus and lectum. That means to lay down on the ground as the candidate to subdeacon and other major's order are doing to show to the church and people that they give themselves body and soul to God. It should have been us upon the cross. Let us not forget that. We have been saved by sacrifice of Jesus on the cross and by his resurrection. And that is reminded every day on the altar and bloodily. Among those words given by Christ, the theme of today is important, my dear brethren, but also the word sitio, I first. St. Alphonsus said, Christ has testified on the cross. He is true and infinite love for us, especially to his mother, to St. John, but also to us because he wants us to know he has had first, first, and love for all men to be saved. In response, what do I deserve? He said to St. Margaret Marie Lecoq, and in Parilomonial, he has to open devotion to press so that to repair the offenses of cold art of men today again because of indifferentism. So this is the message of God we must hear and let us put in practice what is asking, what is he is asking to us to bear our crosses and follow him with faith, with hope and charity. Second, the message of Mary is simple. Asked by Jesus Christ through Mary, she is queen of France by inheritance. She is queen of France by right of conquest. She is queen of France by right of election. Through her great apparitions, Fatima, Lourdes, Pontmain, Rue du Bac, La Salette, Pelle Voisin, Our Lady in Mexico, in Guadalupe, Our Lady of Guadalupe. In each of these manifestation apparitions, she calls us to conversion. In Latin, that means to turn with, to turn towards her son. I'm not having much time to continue. Uh, I'll try to get a few messages. The few messages uh, at Fatima, you know the message, pray the rosary because there are many souls going to hell. Prayers, sacrifice, mortifications, penance, modesty, reparations, petition of Fatima. 1850, that's in 19, apparition is 1917. 1917. 1858, the 18 apparitions approved in Lourdes, among a lot of them. The message is penance, penance, penance. In Pontmain, near Laval. The message is... Uh, Pontmain is the place where Our Lady stopped the Prussian War. The Germans were stopped. And that because uh, by Our Lady, Prussian War was sto had stopped Vatican I Council, who had... Uh, at time to declare, though, the infallibility of the Pope as a dogma. Message was progressively, progressively given to the four children in Pontmain. I put those. These are the five places in France of apparition, main apparitions. 
Message was previously given to the four children in Pronam, but pray, my children, God will hear in time. My son allows himself to be touched. That is why Our Lady has been called in that place, Our Lady of Hope. On 23rd of January, 1871, the long hope of, for armistice was signed, and the General von Schmidt declared, both in German and French, it is written down, we, are, uh, we have to depose the weapons in front of the lady in blue. In Rue du Bac, that's in Paris, the miraculous medal, which is used in the CMRI and worn by the sisters and priests, is called Our Lady of Graces. According to the teaching of Catholic Church, the use of sacramental such as this medal prepares people to receive grace and disposes them to cooperate with it. Message is given to Catherine Labouret on the 19th July of 1830, as Father Redick said today, it is a great weapon against the devil. God wishes to charge you with a mission, is I'm quoting, you will be contradicted, but do not fear. You will have the grace to do what is necessary. Tell your spiritual director all that passes within you. Times are evil in France and in the world. O oh, Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Then there is the Our Lady of Pelvoisin, that's in the center of France, near Châteauroux in Indre. Our Lady, it's Estelle Faguet who received she was sick of serial illness. She was uh, with, uh, diagnosed with tuberculosis. A distinctive feature of the apparition of a lady, to, of a lady to, hear, to her was a claim that the Virgin wished her devotees to wear the scapula of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And then there is Our Lady of La Salette, near Grenoble, reported by two children, Maxima Giraud and Melanie Calva. Formally approved by Pius IX public, as public devotion and prayers to Our Lady of La Salette, referring to its messages of apparition as secrets. The same pontiff on 24th August 1852 issued the Papal Bull, which erected the Association of Our Lady of La Salette, formalized on 7th of September 1852. On 21st of August 1879, Pope Leo XIII granted a canonical coronation to the image now located within the Basilica of Our Lady of La Salette, and a Russian-style tiara was granted to the image. The message given was to respect the repose of the seventh day, that is the Sunday, to respect the name of God, conversions of all humanity at La Salette, as, that, as at the foot of the cross of Mount Calvary, is having sorrow and she is crying to the world. The spirit of La Salette is said to be one of prayer, conversion, commitment. Jean-Marie Vianney and John Bosco were all influenced by La Salette. I don't have much time to speak, but you can see all the remedies through first through prayers. The three El Marys are very efficient to say daily for purity, but for any kind of intention, conversion, healing, any kind, the free El Marys. The El Marys is very powerful. As we know, Our Lady made lots of miracle healing and through uh, different countries in the world. There, is also the, there are also the seven El Mary to the seven sorrows, especially in the month of September, dedicated to the our Lady of Seven Sorrows, and the five our fathers to the five wounds of Christ for the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Plus, I've listed here, I don't have time to speak about them and quote them, but they are interesting. You see, you have a lot of work to study. There is encyclicals, Popes, Gregory the Sixteenth, Pius the Ninth, Leo the Thirteenth, Pius the Eleventh, Pius the Tenth, Pius the Twelfth. And the most of, uh, more known of, uh, among them are Mira Ribos, Quanta Cura, Mortalium animus, which the one strong with Mirarivos, I would say, speaking about indifferentism in religion. Pascendi, of course, condemning modernism, which is going to taint all the society in any fields. And for that, you have the famous catechism of Father Lemius, the catechism of Pas on Pascendi for those who have difficulties to understand philosophy and theology, which is ex explained in that encyclical. And there's also, finally, from the famous Pius XII, Humani generis. These are the main encyclical to as remedies. I don't have time to explain to quote them, but they 
and also there is Achabonimis by by the tenth. These encyclicals are good for us to answer to uh, indifferentism today. I will finish by saying, Ecce, behold. The, tea, the theme of this conference is Behold Thy Mother. The world behold is mentioned several times in the Catholic Church, and I thank Father Renaya the introduction he made on the pulpit yesterday to help me. I don't know how many well, times it was quoted in the scripture. <laughs> I learned something yesterday. And I was an accountant. I'm glad there are so many. I like figures. <laughs> Thanks, Father. The world be all is mentioned several times in the Catholic Church and in its sacramental rites. Here are some examples for us. Be all the humble servant of God, as in the Annunciation Feast on the 25th of March, but also in the Angelus Prayer. Be all the man, ecce homo. Let us remark, ecce is a palindrome. You can read it both sense. Be all thy mother, be all thy son. This is the theme of this year conference. Be all thy Christian faithful, that is baptism. Be all the soldiers of Christ, that is confirmation. Be all the apostles of Christ, that is marriage. Be all the ambassadors of Christ, that is holy orders. Be all the bridges of Christ, that's the bishops, as pontifex, because the bishops makes the bridge between the faithful and Christ. Be all also the chief of the celestial militia, that is St. Michael, who answered and fought against the devil, which means, his name means Quis Udeus, who is like God. Recently, you know, the event, famous event on 15 of April, day of my priesthood anniversary ordination, I was driving back home and I heard on the radio the famous incident, as they say, but for me it's an attempt, of Notre Dame de Paris. One of the biggest monuments of the Christian Dome, damaged by fire. You saw the pictures, and I would say today, God has given a great message to us by this way, and it's a victory with Notre Dame de Paris, with the attempt done there on that place. He has attracted all the world, even though there is indifferentism in this world. He has attracted all the world to that event which happened on the 15th of April. And let us look at a famous article made in the Four Marks newspaper, which is on sale at the entrance, which is a very good newspaper and needs your support, especially today. It is difficult to run a paper, a newspaper today, because of internet, because people don't want to read anymore. They like pictures. My dear friends in Christ, thank you for listening to my talk today, even I've been a bit long. I'm sorry, but there's lots of things to say on that topic, as you could guess now. I conclude today's talk with my last words, which are Christ's words. I said to you that he will quickly revenge them, but yet the Son of Man, when he comes, shall he find, think you, faith on earth? Luke 18, verses 8. God bless you all. Thank you very much for your attendance.